All right, I'm a little behind on my prep for the next issue of Nintendo Power Perspective, so we'll do a book review this week. Last year, 2023, had a full new full murder bot novel, the second full one as opposed to the novellas we had earlier and uh, short stories with System Collapse, which I was eagerly looking forward to for the whole, for the whole year. How eager was I? Well, I pre-ordered the audiobook, and then when KimuraCon came around, I spent KimuraCon listening to listening to it rather when it was going back and forth from KimuraCon from home, listening to it at the con instead of what I usually do, which is get caught up on backlog of anime podcasts or listening to audiobooks of well, light novels, since we're getting a lot more of those now. And I have like the light novel for um I believe the first couple for Full Metal Panic in my audiobook library. So how well did this book meet my expectations? It met them and exceeded them fantastically. Because this is the, probably the most I've struck when the iron is hot for one of the Murderbot novels, I'm going to go very light on spoilers here, but there may be a few things that slip through because this is a direct sequel to Network Effect. So I have to talk about some of how that book ended here. So, spoilers for that. So, yeah, System Collapse picks up, like, probably a few days to maybe weeks after the conclusion of Network Effect, with Murderbot providing security for Dr. Mensa and the Preservation Ox team alongside the crew with of Art, a.k.a. Perihelion, as they try to negotiate a way to get the colonists of the, or descendants of the, pre, the trapped pre-corporation room colonists who are on this planet that is spectacularly contaminated with alien technology. And I get them to want to leave freely, as opposed to getting roped into indentured servitude, slavery, with the corporation that's trying to annex the planet, Parish Estranza, who were a large part of the problem in the last novel. Now, what makes the plot of this novel particularly interesting is last novel's experiences for Murderbot were traumatic in a lot of respects. While some of the previous books have picked up fairly quickly after the one before, there was always a sense of like a few weeks to a month between installments. With that, we got the implication that Murderbot was able to had some time to not cope, in fact, quite the opposite, but to avoid avoid coping with the traumas that it experienced in its own way, often by repeated binge watching of the rise and fall of Sanctuary Moon. Here, Murderbot hasn't had that time. So, in short, Murderbot is having to deal with PTSD, both in terms of with the imminent threat on the lives of its humans, but also the presumed, not to put a fine point on it, death of a close friend in the form of art per, art slash perihelion art got better um and has not only not had time to work through that but also is having to cope with the idea that maybe it is more human than it has feels comfortable being all this all made for a tremendously strong novel that i absolutely enjoyed and I'm definitely looking forward to Martha Wells' next Murderbot novel to see where things go from here. And similarly, I am also very intrigued to see how things go with the Apple TV Murderbot television series in terms of how they handle Murderbot. I'll go on a bit of a tangent here, just to get, get these thoughts out of the way, since it's otherwise a fairly short video. Um... Television series, I have noticed, tend to work better for extended internal character monologues as a framing part of the story in ways that movies don't. So doing Murderbot as a television series makes sense in this way. That said, like I'd, al I'd always mentally kind of envision it as being somewhat animated or as an animated series in a certain respect, both from a budgetary standpoint, involving like some of the planets and that sort of stuff involved, the monsters, but also in terms of having Murderbot, because Murderbot is constructed. Murderbot 
is not born as like a person was. This isn't a situation like, for example, with Anne Leckie's Imperial Rat series, where um, Justice of Torin 4X is as a ancillary is was a person at some point as a person who was basically cyber like heavily cybernetically augmented had a had their brain replaced with the computer brain and had the ai consciousness of a warship uploaded into it it's it, murderbot isn't that murderbot was not created in that way more so in a weird sense having murderbot have perhaps having more like while well, well, Murderbot looks like a quote augmented human um, within the, the internal description of the book, when not in the sec unit armor, I appreciate the idea narratively, or like or from a visual presentation that Murderbot doesn't necessarily look. In a way that a normal human, not saying a normal human actor would, but like there's much more androgynous necessarily. It fits with the fact that Murderbot's personal pronouns in the first few books are it. Um, but perhaps maybe eventually we'll decide to go to go with they, but certainly is not, is neither he, he, she, nor, is neither he, him, nor she, nor, uh, she, her. Um, Murderbot is doesn't have a gender identity and is sex repulsed. Is a sex repulsed asexual. So having Murderbot look more androgen androgynous fits well with something that you can do with animation as opposed to difficulties in casting. Whereas like. Like the actors who immediately pop to mind for who like when they thought who would I cast to play Murderbot are actors who have either no longer either no longer with us and if they were with us were very were probably a bit too old for the role like well David Bowie like Tilda Swinton maybe Elliot Pitt, maybe a trans male actor but. A trans male actor who presents in a more androgynous fashion, um, but that's like that. Like again, that's tricky. You want to have someone who, when you they pre present, say they say they present as not having a gender at all, um, and thus you can't really uh, with the with the implication within the text of the work being that you can't really tell um what their gender is in the first place that that gets complicated in terms of from a, from a casting a human being standpoint it gets easier in an animated character standpoint because you can have the character design reflect androgyny in a way that it is diff that is harder to do with a human. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I, I'm absolutely interested looking for this. I also like going from the cast of the books. This is a remarkably um, ethnically diverse universe in terms of the Murderbot series. Um, like multiple characters are. Of um, going by name, by their names have a uh, Indian, uh, as far as like India, India, Pakistan, or like a, a back. Well, I can't be back up. Going by their names could be like India or Pakistan or like Bangladesh or like that or Afghanistan, like like that particular Central Asia portion of the world, like as like a heavy part of the cast of. The, of like the first story when we have other characters who like, are not necessarily in fact actually I think but most characters like when you get descriptions of like body types or ethnic skin color in relation to their names like often think generally you, you get more people of color 
it is a remark it's generally remarkably diverse cast and i'm like looking forward to this as well in terms of giving an opportunity for more actors of color to have a place to shine in works of speculative fiction film i i appreciate seeing that because there's there are probably a lot of really really good actors um from again of of indian backgrounds of pakistani backgrounds of afghani backgrounds of iranian of um, egyptian of Egyptian, Persian backgrounds, and so forth, who I haven't had a chance to see for in speculative fiction film before, and I'm looking forward to a chance to see more actors in that in those spaces. No pun intended. So, with that in mind, uh, what did you think of System Collapse, and also for the supporting cast of of the Murderbot Diaries? Uh, who would you like to see cast as the various characters? Who would you want to see cast as Dr. Mensa, for example? Um, let me know in the comments below. Who would you want to be the voice of art in particular? Like, uh, let me know in the comments. I mean, I'm excited to hear it. Hear what you have to say, or read what you have to say, rather. Catch you later. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.